No Sony hot shoe. Definitely not. No, 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 no. This video is sponsored by MPB. Hello everybody, hope you're all well and uh, welcome back to the channel. Bit of a weird video this week, um, but hopefully interesting. I get asked a lot uh, what my dream camera is. And I find it a very difficult question to answer because I don't have a dream camera, um, really. There's nothing on the market at the moment that makes me think, oh, that looks like a joy to use and is perfect for my needs in terms of both video and stills and looks like it would last decades. There's nothing like that. So uh, normally I just say, oh, I don't know or I don't have one, which um, kills the conversation. So it gets a bit awkward. So anyway, Emily, Noah and I went on a family trip last week down to Cornwall to see some friends who've just had a baby. And I spent the seven hour car trip down there thinking about this question and thinking about whether I could amalgamate all the stuff that I consider best in terms of features from the cameras currently on the market. And if I could do that, what would the camera look like? And would it be my dream camera? So yeah, that's what I thought this video could be. And I thought it would be interesting, but uh, in case I've massively misjudged it, I'll show you some of the photos I took in Cornwall as well. Wasn't a photography trip, so I didn't do all that much, but uh, I did take a few snaps. So I'll show those. Yeah. Uh, now I have written quite a few notes here for the, uh, the things that I would want my dream camera to feature. And there are quite a few non-negotiables, starting with airdrop compatibility. And I know most modern cameras have Bluetooth and Wi-Fi functionality, but airdrop is just so seamless. I would definitely want my dream camera to have airdrop, which probably means my dream camera needs to be made by Apple. Although my second non-negotiable is um, that it needs to be USB-C rechargeable. So I don't have to worry about carrying loads of batteries. I could just carry a power bank and got one somewhere. And I guess Apple would have struggled with the USB-C rechargeable thing not long ago, but uh, they've had their hand forced. So that's good. Uh, also, actually, I should say, I'm very excited about the prospect of USB-C charging being rolled out across all cameras at the moment, because basically what that means for the second-hand market, about five years time, I reckon, is that any camera you buy, any super cheap camera, say, the equivalent of this Lumix GX1, for instance, which I think I bought for about 50 pounds, where well, they'll all have USB-C charging. And so when you buy a camera like this, you won't have to worry about sourcing obscure batteries. I should be able to recharge straight into camera. Anyway, I digress already. Uh, another non-negotiable, two card slots, definitely. I've had failures in the past, so I definitely want my dream camera to have two card slots. And internal memory, actually. 10 terabytes because it's a dream camera. Might make it quite big though. Nine terabytes. Uh, the viewfinder of my dream camera, I would want to steal from a Fuji X100 or the X Pro line of Fuji's. Uh, and that's simply because I love the fact that with the flick of a switch, you can go from an electronic viewfinder, which I'd want to use probably 60% of the time for my photography, but you can switch to an optical viewfinder, which I think I'd want to use for about 40% of my photography. Because often I've got things around the outside of my frame that I'm watching to see if they'll enter my frame. Could be dog walkers, could be birds, could be anything. But being able to switch between the two, I think is just absolutely fantastic. Uh, and I don't really care about the resolution of the electronic side of the, the equation. I mean, as long as I can see the photo, it's fine. But having the mechanism to switch between the two, I just love. And so that is the viewfinder I'd want on my drone camera. And I guess that would mean I'd have to have a little window at the front of the camera. So maybe my dream camera would look like a, a rangefinder type camera, but it doesn't have to if the manufacturer could find a way to stick the window somewhere else. I don't, it doesn't matter to me. Uh, all I would say is that if the camera had this shape, and this is not a rangefinder camera, but it's a rangefinder style body, uh, I'd want a grip like this, this little GX1. And I mean, this is one of the smallest cameras I've ever owned, but somehow 
it's one of the most comfortable and it's largely because of this fantastic grip so I'd want one of these uh, I am currently testing a Fuji X-T5, a uh, fantastic camera, which I'll talk about in another video. But um, I quite like these dials in some ways. Uh, you've got one on the top for ISO, you've got another for shutter speed and another for exposure compensation. The thing is, I prefer it when cameras have dials that are customizable. So for instance, my Sony uh, A7R5 has got lots of dials that are unmarked, say so lots of dials, three dials, uh, they're all unmarked, which means that I can customise them to be whatever I want them to be, within reason. Uh, and I just think that's a much better setup. See, I'm not massively fussed about dials, but I just want them to be customisable. And they might be customisable on the, the X-T5, but they're just marked, which means it's, it's probably a bit weird if you change them to, to be something else. <laughs> Sensor, I'd probably go for the uh, the sensor that's in my Sony A7R5 as well. Fantastic sensor, not the fastest in the world, but does everything I need it to do. And uh, 60 megapixels, full frame. And you're probably thinking, well, if you're designing your dream camera, why would you not go for a, an even bigger sensor, like a medium format? But the thing is, I think for size and weight, full frame is the sweet spot, really, because you get these, these tiny little lenses and um, the bodies aren't that big. So yeah, full frame is, is probably what I choose to go with and often they're just a bit faster to work with than the medium format sensors as well yeah and maybe the last good thing for now at least i'll say about the sony is uh, the implementation of this screen on the a7r5 if you've not seen it basically it rotates and flips every imaginable way and uh, it's the sort of implementation that you look at and think why has nobody thought of that before but uh, yeah it's fantastic the screen itself though is nowhere near as good as the screens that i see on other Canon and Nikon cameras. Don't know why that is, but uh, yeah, the screen itself, rubbish compared to other brands. How it works with the camera, flawless. Uh, the hot shoe I would take from any brand other than Sony, because uh, this is the third generation of Sony camera that I've had that has a problem whereby if the hot shoe or this bit of the hot shoe gets wet, uh, you get a message saying um, something about an incompatible accessory and it gets in the way of your shooting constantly and it shouldn't happen on a camera this expensive and uh, it's a problem to the point where people will get third party little bits of plastic to put over their hot shoe to protect it so they'll get Nikon protectors or some other protector and uh, like I said it shouldn't happen so yeah the hot shoe I'd, I'd get from someone other than Sony just bolt that onto a, a drone camera I don't really use a hot shoe for anything to be honest so maybe I could scrap the hot shoe quality I'd probably go for Canon or Nikon. Uh, whenever I do workshops for instance and you've got lots of cameras around you I always think that the Canon and Nikons feel like they're better built than the Sony's. It's not by a huge margin I wouldn't sell all of my Sony stuff just have things that are slightly better built but yeah they do feel a bit more robust than my Sony's and of course that doesn't necessarily mean they are but they feel it. So yeah I'd, I'd get Canon or Nikon to, to build my dream camera. The mount I would go for is probably Sony FE because there are just so many lenses to choose from, uh, both from Sony and from third parties. So uh, yeah, that's that's a bit of a no-brainer for me, I think, given that I'd be I'd be going with full frame. Uh, ergonomics, it's no secret of mine that I'd go with Lumix. I think Lumix makes the world's most comfortable cameras. I don't know if that's just because of the hands that I have, but they always feel absolutely perfect in terms of button placements and grips and yeah. So I'd get Lumix to be in charge of the shape of the camera. 
and where the buttons go. And the IBIS, actually. I'd, I think Lumix could do the IBIS as well. I think they've got the, the best stabilisation of, of all the brands I've tried. Um, what else is on a camera? Oh, battery door. Sounds a bit of an odd thing, but on my Leica M11, the battery sort of had a bottom plate that uh, meant it was flush to the bottom of the camera, so you didn't have a, a battery door, so to speak. And uh, I thought that was very clever because this is a very flimsy bit of kit, seems a bit unnecessary. So I think it's better to add this bit onto the battery itself. That seemed quite clever. I mean, you don't have to charge $200 for it, but uh, yeah, I, I did quite like that. How long has my screen been off? I'm trying to think if there's anything else. I don't think there is. And obviously it's very unlikely that any of this is gonna to come to fruition. But I think all of that stuff is what would constitute my dream camera. Hopefully one day I see it. Anyway, thank you for watching. Uh, I hope it was interesting and I hope you enjoyed some of the shots from Cornwall. I love Cornwall, uh, especially in the off season. Not so much in summer. But uh, yeah, this time of year, it's fantastic. Uh, also, there's only a week or so left on the, uh, the print sale. This is the current photo from Antarctica. So there's a few left of those if you want one. And also a huge thank you to the sponsor of this week's video, MPB. And lots of the features that I've talked about in this video are available in many, many different cameras available from MPB. Uh, they are the place, in my opinion, to both buy and sell used camera gear because they have tens if not hundreds of thousands of pieces of stock at any one time. Uh, everything on their website is thoroughly checked before being placed on their website and also all the items come with a six month warranty which means that you can buy in confidence and save hundreds if not thousands of pounds on your next bit of kit. Uh, and as I said before I reckon at least half of my kit comes from MPB so if you're in the market for something new, used, then definitely check out MPB. And likewise, if you're looking to sell some of your gear to free up some cash for a photography trip or some other gear, then again, definitely check out MPB. Because it's by far, in my opinion, again, the most seamless place to sell your kit. Uh, basically, you get a quote from them, and if you're happy with the quote, they arrange a courier to come to your house, pick up the kit, and then when they receive it, they'll assess it, confirm your quote, pay you very fast. It's fantastic, I love it. So if you're in the market to either buy or sell used camera gear, then definitely check out MPB. And a big thank you for their continued support of this channel. Uh, but I'll see you next week when hopefully I'll be spending a bigger proportion of the video outside taking photos and not talking about camera features. It's the plan. Never goes to plan, but that's the plan. See you then.